Gyroscope is a small little device that reports the information how fast am I rotating along my roll, pitch and yaw axis. A flight controller uses the information to stabilize flight. If flight UAV is rotating right, that, me, that is the sign for the UAV that probably the motors on the right side should be given slightly more power to concentrate. If we want to rotate forward, flight controller will match the output power to the backward motors to reach the rotation speed we are inputting through the sticks. Uh, but there is there is <laughs> there's almost always a, a but in this. Uh, gyroscope signal uh, is polluted by the vibration. Uh, it records not only the information that something is rotating, but it also records all the the noise the noise, the noise in form of vibration uh, that's coming from the motor's propellers, bearings, wind, uh, landing, I don't know, bird hitting uh, a drone, whatever there is happening. There are three main sources of gyroscope noise. First of them is the motor slash propeller combo. Uh, this device that's rotating among its axes it's not perfectly balanced, almost never. So every time it creates, uh, it makes one rotation, it shakes a little. This shake is then propagated through the arm to the body of the UAV, to the gyroscope and is recorded. Second source of uh, gyro noise is the propeller and the air itself. Every time, every time the propeller's blade crosses the arm, the stream of air that is generating hits the arm and shakes the UAV a little. And once again, this information is recorded by the gyroscope and flight controller. Uh, this will have a different pattern in case of two-bladed propellers, because it will shake twice the time the propeller makes one complete revolution. In case of three-bladed propellers, there will be three shakes, four-bladed propellers will generate four shakes, and so on, and so on, and so on. Luckily, we are not using like nine-bladed propellers, but maybe one day. Who knows? And the third main source of the vibration that uh, Jiro is recording is called the harmonics. Mm, it's not a vibration generated by anything directly. Every signal that's not a perfect sinusoid is generating a series of higher frequencies. So, for example, if the motor is generating noise of, I don't know, 100 Hz, it will also contain the harmonic frequency of 200 Hz, 300 Hz, and so on, and so on, and so on. Each of those harmonics will be visible inside the gyroscope trays. Uh, of course, each harmonic frequency will have smaller uh, amplitude, but still it will be recordable. There are also minor sources of uh, gyroscope noise, like the bearings, like uh, air streams uh, uh, from the propeller hitting the motor or the cable, or really many, many different sources but in our case they are uh, very small comparing to the motor propeller and harmonics and usually we do not have to care about them very much. Now that I gave you the theory, let's take a look at some real life examples. Yesterday I went flying and I've recorded exactly 24 seconds of log that contains both unfiltered and filtered gyroscope signal. What you can see here is what gyroscope reported directly to the flight controller. It's very, very noisy. This line somewhere averaged between those uh, small peaks uh, is what really happened with the UAV. This is information how it rotated in the pitch axis, the blue trace. The red trace is for the roll axis. But every time it is reporting more rotation less rotation more rotation less rotation if we zoom in you see something like this flight controller cannot is absolutely unable to work with the signal like this 
signal like this will make flight impossible. Why? Because the motors will be oversteer, they will be trying to jump from zero to maximum uh, power in milliseconds. Uh, it will create huge oscillations, huge vibrations, and no, this is not how you want this to fly. Now, previously, I've few, previously few minutes ago, I talked to you about gyroscope signal uh, noise sources. So take a look at it. I will now open the pitch information spectrum graph, and this is how the spectrum graph looks like. Okay, because I was recording at 500 Hz frequency, I have graph up to 250 Hz, but in this case this will be fully enough. If we will take a look at the left side first, those, this, the highest peak, those are so-called flight frequencies. Flight frequencies are the real information what's happening with the UAVs. Uh, depending on what you are doing, they are in the range from 0 to 40 up to 90 Hz, but uh, almost never above 100 Hz. In most cases, the flight will be smooth and nice with the frequencies up to, I don't know, 40 Hz. We do not need much more. And this is what we want in the gyroscope signal that will be introduced into the flight controller, into the pit loop and then outside to the motors again. If we move here, there is another peak. This peak is concentrated at somewhere around 75 Hz. This is the frequency with which motors on my 2 kg quadcopter are rotating. Uh, that's more or less 4000 RPM, if you divide this by 60, you will get around 72 to 75 uh, Hertz frequency in hover. So this, this is what's happening. This is the noise that came from the imbalanced propeller and imbalanced uh, motor itself. If we go for the right, there is another group of higher amplitudes located somewhere around 150 Hertz. This is where two things happened. First of all, uh, this is the vibration from the streams of air hitting the arm of the quadcopter. And second of all, this is where the first harmonic frequency of the motors reappears itself. So this is pretty high value mountain here somewhere. In case of three-bladed uh, bl propellers, this would be slightly wider, but with slightly less uh, um, amplitude. Then, second from harmonic frequency, why not? If we add 75 base frequency to the 150 first harmonic frequency, we will land somewhere around 225 Hertz. Oh, look, here is another group of frequencies that are introduced into the gyro signal. All of this, starting from here, starting from somewhere here, all of this is something we do not like. This is something that is making our UAV drone quadcopter multirotor, however we will call it, make fly worse than it could. Now, let's compare how unfiltered gyroscope signal and filtered gyroscope signal looks like. Unfiltered, extremely thick traces, filtered, very, very tiny traces, precise information what was happening with UIV. Compare this to this. I really hope you see the difference. This is something that flight controller loves. This is clean, unpolluted information, what is really happening and the base information how flight controller should react, what is happening around. Let me open the spectrum graph of row signal. You see peak here, flight frequencies, input frequencies, motor noise, propellers, some harmonics and let's compare it to the filtered signal. 
with this zoom level there is almost nothing here if we will zoom more then there is something here at around 80 hertz but this is very low amplitude it's not a problem there is almost nothing at 150 almost nothing at 200 hertz and only those low frequency uh, elements of the gyroscope signals are visible and how it makes oh sorry wrong slider how it makes this out of this thanks to filtering like i said modern flight controllers uses multiple filters to transform this unusable garbage into this very usable and nice gyroscope signal how it does it and how to set up those filters i will tell you in the next video this is all for today take care bye